Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense and today we're actually going to be doing a reaction video. I've been teaching self-defense since 2008. I've been studying various martial arts with a self-defense focus since 1995. Um, and one of my most popular videos is me ranking several martial arts as far as their effectiveness for self-defense. And all the time I'll get comments of people asking me about other martial arts. The truth is most of those martial arts uh, that you guys are asking about are arts that I'm just generally not very familiar with. And one art that gets brought up every so often is this art of Sistema. So I'm vaguely familiar with Sistema as a Russian self-defense systems. I've seen a few videos of Sistema and I've never been overly impressed, but I found this video that's the top five Sistema Masters 2019. So this is apparently, according to this YouTuber, um, this is their the top five best. So I think that's a great way for me to have an introduction into at least looking at Sistema techniques, seeing uh, who are the best at the art. So that's what this video is going to be. It's just going to be me looking at, at some Sistema practitioners and kind of breaking down their techniques and kind of giving you my thoughts. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I have the music turned off on this video uh, for copyright reasons. Okay, so this guy comes in for a punch. He kicks him in the shin and he punches him in the face. So let's, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and break that down. Uh, break that first one down because this is um, already, I'm a little suspect of this. So let's start off. I'm going to, I'm going to get to that point where we're doing this slow motion that'll make it a little bit easier here so we have the shin kick right here so for starters the the guy here who i'm assuming is a sistema master his hands are down and in any self-defense situation it doesn't matter how cocky you are you never want to have your hands down you really want to have your hands in between you and the person so so if you imagine you're the person trying to hit me the fastest punch you could throw at me is going to go right down the line like this and so I want to put my hands directly between that. So from the side, it's going to look kind of like this. This is a basic boxer stance. It's just less aggressive with the open hands. But you can do all the same kind of boxing moves um, from that position. Now, a shin kick is a very painful kick. And it looks like he uses a toe kick, which is um, even more painful if you have a steel toe or you're wearing a boot. A uh, toe kick is absolutely a very hard kick. Would it just stop a punch into the track in its tracks like it is here? Absolutely not. For sure, what we're seeing here already is we're seeing a very compliant bad guy. That this guy here is obviously training with him. He's probably paid a lot of money to train with him, and it's in his best interest to make him look good. So let's take a look at this punch that he throws. So we can see we got a circular punch. Commonly, we're just calling that the hook. And when he lands, he's landing with his palm down. Now, a palm down hook that travels like this, this is a little controversial because a lot of boxers will throw a palm down hook. But when you throw a palm down hook, hook without gloves on, your pinky tends to be the first thing that smashes into the person's um, head. And what happens is you end up breaking this bone right here. It's such a common break that they actually call it the boxer's fracture. So... Um, the way that we avoid this is that when we throw the hook, we actually turn our palm towards us. This hook does have a little bit less range than a palm down hook, but it's safer for your bone structure. Now, what I will give him kudos for is his targeting is beautiful. Um, you see that he's hitting right in what, what I would call the dimple of the chin. So if you think about your chin like a cup, it's on either side. This spot right here is a very strong place to hit. Um, now, of course, if you've seen my videos at all, you know that I tend to prefer open-handed striking like eye jabs, palm strikes. But if you're going to throw a punch to someone's head, for sure, this is one of the best places to hit. Um, he's a big man, and so his punches are going to hurt regardless of him not having a lot of form. But I would not consider this good form. His hips aren't really behind the strike either. So let's go ahead and continue. And, of course, his, his partner goes flying to the ground dramatically. Um which is common in demos. I'm, what just happened here? We, <laughs> okay, I need to rewind this. I don't mean for this to just to be, hey, I'm going to shit on Sistema. That's not really what my goal was. Um, although I have seen Sistema before, and like I said, it's never really impressed me. So let me talk about what he's do doing right here. Um, so 
as a guy oh not this punch sorry we got to move on to the next one so we've already seen this we've analyzed that okay it looks like he might be doing a progressive indirect attack which is pretty cool um so what he's doing right is is he's intercepting that as opposed to getting overly focused on blocking the first thing he does is he attacks first this is a crucial skill when it comes to what we call hostile standoffs which is what they're simulating right here the idea of of you know you you you're trying to talk your way out of a fight and then someone swings on you well if you know you absolutely can't get out of the fight or someone does swing on you if you can intercept with a more powerful attack or a faster attack lots of times that's superior um what we got going wrong here um which is hard to because i wish we don't have that slow motion oh lord have mercy look out <laughs> um is his stance uh i take huge issue once again i think i'm going to see this a lot with this guy that his hands are not protecting him standing with your hands down may seem very confident but at the end of the day everything that you are is contained right here inside of your head if you get hit in the stomach it might send you to the hospital you get hit in the legs it might hurt really bad worst case scenario sends you to the hospital Getting hit in the head is the only thing that can forever change your life. It can kill you, cause tremendous brain damage. It can result in someone else having to take care of you for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter how good you are at fighting. Always keep your hands up when you're in a hostile standoff situation. Now, as I said, it kind of looks like he fakes maybe. I'm not really, I'm trying to point to it with my finger. I'll point to it here. I'm not sure if that's a fake. So in Jeet Kune Do circles, they call that a progressive indirect attack. We also call it fainting. Um... I'm not sure, or he's preparing a block and then changes his mind. I'm not really sure. But then he throws a really slick, quick jab. That's a very fast jab. Um, it's hard It's because it's not in slow motion. I can't see if his hips are behind it. But that is a really fast jab, and I will give him credit that because, honestly, with bigger guys like this, usually you don't expect him to move that fast. So I am impressed with how fast that punch was. But his, I don't know what he did if he, like, broke this guy's you know chi or something obviously chi is bs um i'm not really sure what happened here but his his partner just like whack a dudes out and i don't i don't really i don't really know why um he just falls back like that and then the guy does a, a like a little, a little punch in the face <laughs> so all of that is not realistic no one's going to respond that way um when you hit them, the jab is a really good punch. Um, if you have someone who's coming forward with a lot of force, a good jab can drop somebody. But generally speaking, even if you have a really, really hard lead jab, it's probably not dropping someone with just one punch unless you have a lot of power behind it. Like, for example, weight. All right, let's see what this next technique is. Okay. All right. Okay. He, he, I'm assume he's teaching right now. Is that what I, I, I think is going on there? Um, cause I'm not super amazed. So he set up for, uh, an outside reap here. So if we, if we, if we look at this, his initial response, what's his initial response to this? What is he even responding to? Is it a straight punch? Okay. It's a circular. Oh no, that's, that's the quick punch. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so he's already sidestepping. The guy is throwing a straight punch. The Sistema guy is kind of cross-stepping behind him. And this, this structure here is something we want to tend to avoid if we don't already have control over our opponent. Um, because if you do get hit, you'll tend to turn away. My basic rule, if you're going to move left, your left foot should lead. If you're going to move right, your right foot should lead. That way, you're always kind of so your center line is always pointing at your opponent. So this structure would be no good. However, he lands in what looks like an outside reap position. So in judo, we one of the basic throws in judo is osotogari, the major outside reap. Um, and it kind of comes from a position like this. Usually you have a hold of the arm, but you could do an outside reap from this position. Um, he could also be setting up for a reverse hip toss. But instead he goes for it looks like a knuckle strike into the solar plexus. Um once again, uh, this is something that, that I encountered a lot when I was training in Kenpo. I trained in Kenpo for many years. I'm actually a fifth-degree black belt in Kenpo. Um, but 
one thing I'll see a lot of times is people will leave their arm out for an extended period of time during training. And punches don't stay out, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Punches tend to go back. If you look, one, two, three, four. So it takes four seconds before that guy draws his hands back. Even if we're practicing slowly. So like when I teach Kempo, for example, if you extend your punch, uh, what I expect is for you, if we're going slow to practice the technique, I still expect you to throw a punch and then bring the punch back. So it's slow like this, as opposed to you stick the punch out and you just stand there waiting for the guy to finish. Because once again, all this data is now useless because because nobody would respond like that. Nobody would sit with their arm out. Punches are very quick motions. Um, and so you basically have a chance to do about one thing for one punch. So they throw a punch. You could block and hit the eyes at the same time. You could block and punch. Uh, you can move around and get into a grapple position. But you don't really have the opportunity, as you're seeing this guy do, where you're doing like five or six things to one punch. You'd have to move so insanely fast. This always reminds me of if you've ever been a kid. Uh, of course you've been a kid. When you were a kid. We'll pause here. When you were a kid, you'd play slow motion fighting. I think a lot of people have, you know, where you guys pretend like you're fighting, but everybody goes slow. And then there's suddenly one kid that just goes like, wow, goes really, really fast because they're frustrated. Well, that's kind of what this is happening here. It's like, well, if we're all going slow and then you went fast, that means in real speed, you just broke the sound barrier. You know, you just moved inhumanly, inhumanly fast. So, you know, kind of flawed there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, continue from here. So that's a pressure point under the jaw, this little spot here. Um, pressure points are real, but they don't work the way a lot of people believe them to. So a pressure point, all it is, is a place on your body where a nerve is exposed. And for sure, if you hit a nerve right on the money, it can do a tremendous amount of damage. Um, well, not really damage. It can give a tremendous effect. So like hitting this nerve directly under the ear is a result of a lot of knockouts. But the idea of someone in the middle of a fight having like pinpoint precision with a very fast punch versus a moving target and knocking someone out, not very likely. I always say that most knockouts are only about 20 or 30% skill, and the rest of it is luck, unless you're talking about Mike Tyson, who knew how to knock people out. But no, but but in, in, re, in reality, nerve striking, actually hitting nerves, um, is kind of a fool's errand. It's a very, very, very difficult skill to do against someone who is literally standing still and doing nothing. So it's even harder to do against somebody who, you know, already knows martial arts or somebody who's actively moving and trying to hit you on the flip side using nerve manipulation so like pressing a nerve to get a reaction in a grappling situation um using a nerve like like this nerve in the hand just to kind of politely tell someone not to touch you they can be useful in that kind of way as just a way to inflict a little bit of pain without doing damage but generally speaking um Pressure points are going to be like one of the last tools on your list that are important to learn. It's much more important to learn distance management, punch protection, how to throw proper strikes and having a good grappling game and probably even learning weapons before you actually want to get into nerve striking. All right, let's continue. So he helps the guy up because he's such a good, good master. Okay, so let's see here. Whoa, all right. Whoa, look out. Whoa, okay. Okay, so that was not, that wasn't real martial art. I mean, it, what happened there cannot, will not happen in reality. So what we, what you just saw there <laughs> was, um, I always say that if you want to know if a technique works, don't look at the guy performing the technique, but look at the guy who the technique is being performed on. Who's doing more work? All right, because in reality, you should be seeing this guy, the guy doing the technique, he should be doing all the work, and this guy should just be thrown. Um, for example, um, in judo, um, if you watch any judo takedowns, you'll see that the uke, the guy being thrown in judo, they just get thrown. They just stand there, and it, it happens. Whereas this guy, if we watch him, So you notice how he's doing a front flip. He even break falls. You can see a break fall here. That's a basic way to fall safely. 
and then he lays on the floor like it hurts. That he literally just throws himself in a flip there. So I, I feel like if you, I mean, does anybody see this and think this is real? I mean, obviously, because the guy's got a, a legion of students. So long and short of it, there are moves that flip people like that, but it, you have to be touching them a lot more to make it happen. I've seen some crazy stuff in the world of judo. I one time trained with this eighth degree black belt in judo who could legitimately put me on the floor with a handshake. But once again, he was doing all the work. I just stood there and I would get thrown. <laughs> so, so, you know, whereas what you're seeing here is the uke, the guy being thrown, he's doing all the work here. So this is not a yeah, this is like a movie trick. We do the, like like legitimately. I remember seeing this in Mortal Kombat. Like, like what you're gonna watch here is this guy is gonna put his hand straight down, and as he puts his hand straight down, this guy does a front flip, and and he's not making him do a front flip. He does a front flip at the right time, and it looks a lot like he um, got thrown. But that's just a basic movie trick. That's something you would do in stage acting or any or any kind of uh, movie stunt double sort of stuff. Um, all right, let's go ahead and keep on watching this guy. Oh my God, did he really punch that guy? That's really not necessary. Um, <laughs> so so big, big rule in my book um, is you never train with an instructor who punches you for real during demonstrations. Now, if you want to spar with your instructor, that's all good. It's, it's actually, if you've, because I'll say if you have an instructor who won't spar with you, unless they're like, old, um, older guys, you know, maybe have injuries that don't let them spar, but generally speaking, your instructor should spar with you. But during demos, things should always be safe. There should be no risk of injury at all for somebody who is, uh, just standing there being taught on. If I have an uke, I shouldn't be hurting them. So this guy moves in and he punches is his thumb. Oh, I'm so happy I froze just then. Oh, no. No, it's on the outside. Okay, it's on the outside. I thought his th I thought this finger was going over it. Like, how do I angle this like this? I thought he was doing one of these things. But no, he's he's holding his thumb in the right place. Oh, I could have sworn he was doing this 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 jive here. Um, we are your punches. I, I have a whole video on how to punch bare knuckle, but you always want your thumb on the outside. <laughs> so it is, it is. I just, I misread this blurriness. Now, one thing you're seeing, which is a tall tale sign of somebody who is, um, not a competent fighter or someone who didn't do a lot of fight is his eyes are closed while he is punching that, um, it sounds really particular, but I actually used to get beat up really bad by one of my coaches because I would blink when I punched like this. And so since he knew my eyes were closed when I threw punches, he would uh, just counter my punch and punch me back. And <laughs> he was a very good kickboxer um, and uh, he taught me to keep my eyes open. I always said crazy eyes, fight with crazy eyes. So that you, I mean, you gotta blink at some point, but just don't blink while you're punching. And then this guy just drops. I'm not really sure if that punch really knocked him out. If, if if that punch knocked him out, that was the most irresponsible thing I've seen in a demo. That's that's egomania out the ass. Um, once again, you should never, ever, ever be actually punched by your instructor during a demonstration. And once again, we see no sense of trying to protect himself, no hands up or anything like that, which is dumb. So he punches him in the stomach and hits him arbitrarily in the back of the rib. I, I was hoping that'd be like a kidney shot. But we see we go stomach. There's a bit of hit behind that punch. And then the guy drops. And then he just jacks him in the rib. This punch would, would be annoying, but would not do much. Um, his other hand being way back here is pretty amateurish. I'm kind of in the, my, my picture's in the way, but the guy's hand's kind of held back that generally speaking when one hand's out we want the other hand back protecting us so i never want to be punching with my arms like this um people who try to punch really really hard but don't know how to punch will oftentimes punch like this um and then the once again the reaction of the uke is just not realistic that i'm consistently seeing his ukes which are the people who he's doing the technique to his ukes are just dropping to the ground for him 
Um, which, like, to an extent, an uke has to pantomime what the attack is actually going to do. But once again, it has to be what the attack's going to actually do. So if I hit you in the stomach, you, as an uke, you'd bend over a little bit, but just falling to the ground as though I had the force of God behind my fist, and that's not realistic um, at all. So that would so if your uke doesn't respond realistically, anything that you do after his like overacting response or underacting response is based off of false data and it's it's basically useless information f for you from that point i don't know if that makes sense but let's keep on going so he just punches this guy in the face okay that that wasn't a real punch so maybe he's not punching him these guys are just really good at faking it oh did he just wave at the guy see that ninja shit let's do it again Whew. boof boof okay so <laughs> i see what's going on here so so I, so I guess he's not hitting them, but they're responding as though he's knocking them out with one punch. Um, at least I, that's what I hope is happening. Um, alternatively, he's doing some magical chi, um, ancient Chinese secret techniques that I know nothing about. But anyways, <laughs> um, but let's talk about structure. Let's talk about, you know, what he's doing right here. So once again, we see interception, and interception really is a very important skill in a fight. That if someone's going to swing on you, if you can get the first punch on them, the first strike on them, preferably something more effective than a punch, like an eye strike or a groin strike or an elbow, um, that's the idea. That, that's the ideal. Is um, I w heard one instructor say that blocks are kind of like insurance that they're the first thing you should learn and they're the last thing you want to use because ideally we want to be able to defend ourselves but um, if we can do like offense first it's going to give us more of an advantage but as far as this as a punch um i mean i i assume the people who are watching this know that this would be a very ineffective way of punching best case scenario he'd be punching with the front of his knuckles over here his hands not up that hand should be up protecting him no matter what style you study i mean i've seen maybe some styles that will have the hand down more to the belly area but i don't know many arts that would encourage someone to just throw their hand straight down and then he swings once again with that double swing motion now here's the thing i'm sure this guy punches like a ton of bricks but it's not because he have, has good technique okay when we talk about what makes something hit hard it's two things it's mass and velocity how much does the thing being thrown at you weigh and how fast is it moving so if you are a very small person you absolutely have to be a fast hitter to have any chance of hitting hard when you are a bigger man like this um you oh sorry I kind of popped the mic when you're a bigger man like this you are going to tend to hit hard just because you have weight behind your punches he has a little bit of hip behind that punch which is good but once again this like both hands swinging like this is actually keeping making it so his technique is not safe um and for this like skinny guy back here if he did the same technique it wouldn't work for him um this guy's just a real big well i mean large man so let's look at a couple more So it's nice little, nice. I like these. These slow motion ones are easy to break down. Okay. So there's that. Oh, that was more of a kidney shot. But once again, you see this backhand is way back here. And don't get me wrong. Like when you are really fighting, your hands will sometimes swing like this i mean you can freeze frame some professional boxers and their hands will be down like this but during a demo you want to try to keep as good a form as you possibly can um this would be a mistake for a boxer or a kickboxer or anybody who's actually trained in fighting to do to keep their hands low like that while they're throwing one punch the, if, if if we ever drop our hands like if i drop my hands like this in sparring it's because i made a mistake it's not a style uh choice so this guy is coming up to punch him in the face and he does that. Ooh, that looked like a real hammer fist to the jaw. Because watch how the guy's jaw shakes here. If you watch his actual jaw, it kind of goes, ding. Ooh. Okay, so that was a that that was a somewhat real shot because you saw how his jaw caved and his head snapped. So this is this is what we call an angle two hammer fist in my school. It's a very effective strike. It really is. Um, if you ever held pads for hammer fist, they hit harder than damn near any punch. 
They're tremendously powerful. Um, but once again, we see his hands are not up. And most importantly, he's beating the shit out of this guy. If you look at this guy at the start of this demo, he clearly, uh, let me freeze it here. Look at him. He's having a good time trying to show some techniques. He's having a good time trying to show some techniques. And then out of nowhere, this jackass just actually hits him during a demo. How absolutely unacceptable. So let's talk about this here. This is actually a move in real fighting. <laughs> um, so I, I, I've just been shitting on him the whole time. This is a real move called a cut block. So this is what we call an inside cut block. The idea is that you're punching in a way that your elbow goes up slightly. Let me move over here. It goes up slightly so that, that your shoulder and your elbow defend the punch and you come through and you hit. Now he's using it like a hammer fist, which I suppose could work. Um, so this here is really good. Uh, his hand not being up is really bad and him hitting his opponent in the face is also really bad. So we're about 25 minutes into this video and I feel like I've been repeating myself a few times. So we're going to go ahead and end it here. If you enjoy this kind of content, be sure to let me know in the description box down below. Um, I would love to do more of these. This was actually really fun and I only made <laughs> made it a fraction of the way through this video. I look, I made it a minute and 16 through this video and I already had quite a bit to say. So I actually had a lot of fun doing this. Overall, I can't talk to Sistema as a whole because I've only seen this one guy do his techniques, but this guy is, he's awful. He's awful. And don't get me wrong, he's a huge dude and maybe he's won a couple fights because um, he's a big man. But one thing I always want you to keep in mind anytime someone tells you that they won a street fight is that when two people who know nothing fight, someone still wins. That doesn't mean that they know anything. Someone always wins in the fight. So if they don't know anything and this guy knows nothing, all right, well, there's like a 50-50 chance that he wins. Um, it's much better to train under somebody who's trained uh, for actual like combat. Um, a boxing coach would give you a better chance of surviving a street fight than this guy's techniques. These techniques would not work in a self-defense situation. And most importantly, like I said, he's never actually protecting his head. And finally, as I've said multiple times, he keeps hitting his students. If you ever go to a gym where an instructor intentionally hits you during demos, that's that's bad for you. You only get one of these brains. Don't let people knock them around. All right, so if you enjoyed this content and you made it all the way through this video, I mean, we're like 27 minutes in, you clearly enjoy my content. So be sure to rate and rate, yeah, thumbs up and subscribe. And if you live in my area, which is Indianapolis, Indiana, come to my school, the School of Self-Defense. All the information you need to do that is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. We also offer some online training to get you kind of up and going, working the heavy bag and, and what have you. Um, all that information is on my website as well. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.